Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Hello and welcome to another video. Now, today we have another Halo news piece. Now, as has been the case recently, my good friend Kevin from the phenomenal channel Kevin Cool X will be covering today's news because, well, he's an expert and he really, really knows Halo. I like bringing his content directly to you guys. But if you want to see more of Kevin, including news, lore, and Halo gameplay, check out his channel linked in the upper right hand corner and down in the description. Also, let's get him to 20,000 as soon as we can. Let's roll the video. We just received a massive news dump of Halo Infinite greatness on the sandbox. We're talking about the weapons, vehicles, equipment, possibility of some fan favorite vehicles coming back and a significant change to the hunters. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? My name is Kevin and I'm here to help out Eckhart's Ladder with a little bit of Halo news. I do run my own Halo based channel here on YouTube so you guys want to check that out. Link in the description down below. So let's get right into the video here. So we recently received a massive development update about Halo Infinite called Inside Infinite. It's a new series that 343 is going to be putting together a monthly development update for us to understand what's going on with Halo. They even mentioned after reading this development update if you have any additional questions go on social like Twitter with the hashtag Ask343 to get your questions noticed by the developers will hopefully see a trend to where they can address things that people want to know about Halo Infinite. So in this video I'm going to give you kind of the highlights of each topic that they mentioned within this because they, if I had to go read this whole entire blog update this would be like an, a, an hour long video. I will be releasing more detailed breakdowns on my channel as well so make sure you go check out the channel there. So you might be asking yourself what is the sandbox team which is the team that they had the discussion with in this development update. Well the sandbox team refers to pretty much everything you interact with in the game. So like vehicles, equipment, weapons, objects, and just other players as well. So literally this ch team is in charge of pretty much everything you do in the game. This is why this development update is so massive. One of the things they first bring up in this development update is the combat doctrine. This is kind of like the holy scripture of what makes Halo awesome. There are five main sections to this doctrine. The dance, the tools of engagement, the lone wolf ability, connected actions, as well as survivability. What do they mean by the dance? The dance is kind of like your typical gunfights that you get yourself into in Halo. They've messed with this quite a lot ever since Halo Reach, but especially in Halo 5 with the boost ability. It sounds like after reading through this, they want to kind of bring back that classic feel of the strafing, the jumping, the melees, the grenades, the weapon damage and stuff like that. So a more return to roots kind of feel when it comes to the dance. The next section is tools of engagement. Essentially, what are the things that people are gonna be able to utilize in the game. They want items to feel super powerful because you're more than just a soldier, you're a Spartan. But also making sure those items are not crazy overpowered. The lone wolf ability of just being able to stand on your own and feel like you're a capable soldier within the battle and be able to make a difference. Not necessarily be like a super soldier that's invincible like Doom Guy or talking more just like being able to hold your own. Connected actions are the part where it's about how the game kind of feels. You know, the tr Halo has a very specific feel to it and they don't want to mess with it. That's why they actually took down the current engine for Halo Infinite, brought it down to its base roots, and then built it back up to be more functional for content development. So it's not a completely new engine from scratch, but it's a basically a new engine because it was broken down to its foundational roots. A very interesting part about this is that since Halo Infinite is the first Halo game to have a PC version at launch, that they actually kind of borrowed some elements from that. And what they say here is that because of that ability, and the fact that Halo Infinite will be on PC that led us to rebuild the control scheme system to allow players to fully rebind and remap their controls regardless of platform. So all your console players, you'll be able to rebind your buttons just like how PC players have had since, well, forever. So maybe gone are the days of bumper jumper, recon, green thumb, and you can just kind of do your own thing. Now I have a feeling that probably still maintain those same button schemes, but you have the option to probably create your own as well. And the last pillar being survivability. Now, a lot of Halo games have had different interpretations of what survivability is. Halo C seemed to kind of hit the right mark on that one. Halo 2, you are super vulnerable. Everybody remembers how lethal Halo 2 Legendary Campaign is. Halo 3, they kind of brought it back up. ODST, they made it less survivable. Took a lot more damage in that game as well. And then Halo Reach, you had the health packs, comebacks. So survivability varies a lot within Halo as a franchise. In this section, they specifically mentioned tuning different items of your health, being the max shield value, the shield stun time, shield recharge time, and more when it comes to survivability. So making sure that it's tuned properly for Halo Infinite and not trying to just 
copy and paste other systems from other games. This next section, they mention a huge part of Halo Infinite's gameplay loop, and that is the equipment, which is coming back from Halo 3 in a similar kind of style. They mention at a high level what they want to accomplish with equipment is that they want the equipment items themselves to perform very similarly across campaign and multiplayer experiences. For example, the drop wall roll as a defensive energy shield will be the same across experiences. However, they are tailoring each equipment and all the sandbox features at that point as well to the experience they're being used. Essentially what they're saying on that one is that they want equipment to be the same throughout campaign and multiplayer, kind of like how we had in Halo 3. But obviously they're allowing themselves to have different types of tuning in case the community wants some differences. Another key philosophy that they mentioned about equipment is that they want it to basically have a low skill floor being very easy to use and understand, but also having a high skill ceiling where creative players can utilize it to their advantage more effectively in battle. This is something that Halo's kind of struggled with, honestly, since Halo Reach, where they've tried adding in more mechanics, more things to the game, and basically kind of overcomplicated in a way. Especially Halo 5 suffered from this the most, where your base movement ability in Halo 5 is so complicated that it actually kind of turns off a lot of players and like the skill floor that they mentioned might have been a little too high, but also the skill ceiling is very high in Halo 5 as well. I've always equated Halo to chess in a way, where it's a simple game to understand, but it takes complex theory to understand it in great detail. One of the developers actually mentioned their favorite new equipment in the game that they haven't been able to show quite yet, but what they say here specifically is, it's a highly physics-based item and has tons of interactions across the sandbox and will leave you laughing and yelling, did you see that? Now some people on my Twitch channel have kind of said that it might have been a reference to the gravity lift that we had back in Halo 3, but I never really had that feeling of did you see that kind of feeling with the grav lift. I think this is something a little bit more exaggerated. They also mentioned the reason why they focus so much on equipment is because they've tried to making these different abilities in there to the player themselves, which really messes with the balance of Halo. And what I mean by that is a lot of say like Halo 5 is specifically designed with like sprint in mind, clamber, sliding ability, boost slides and stuff like that. But the map is specifically designed for that. So if you take away one of those abilities, the map doesn't really function the way it should. That's why giving players less abilities, but giving them more options within the equipment allows for more freedom to where if something is broken and messed up, they can either tweak it or just completely remove it and the game still plays fine. Now in this next section, we're talking about the vehicles within Halo Infinite. Now the main thing I want to take away from this whole vehicle section is that they made a lot of references to Combat Evolved and they made a lot of references to LAN experiences and teamwork which makes me think that like, I have more team-based vehicles within Halo Infinite, which was a serious criticism in Halo 5 that most of the new vehicles were very individual-based and not a lot of teamwork was needed. They do mention about utilizing specific vehicles for specific terrains within the world of Zeta Halo. They mention here specifically saying, going over an area covered in rocky crag and fallen trees, the Warhog, with its high ride height and large tires, will eat it up. Going over a flat marsh covered with pockets of water, the anti-grav of the Ghost will let you smoothly boost through it. Stuck in a canyon trying to get out of the base, the Banshee might be the quick up and over. On the topic of vehicles, it sounds like we might have a fan favorite vehicle coming back as well. When Del Hoyo, the lead for the sandbox team, was asked what his favorite new thing with Halo Infinite, mentioned something rather specific. One of my favorite sandbox items is a vehicle that we haven't shown yet, but I'm sure I won't be alone with my favoritism once we do reveal it to the community. This vehicle isn't only brand new, but it has received a fresh coat of paint while awaiting triumphant return to Halo. Now, when I hear this, I can't help but think of two vehicles specifically, one being the elephant from Halo 3, which a lot of people want to have come back, and also the Falcon. And I think the Falcon might be the vehicle that they're talking about with this one. It was a fan favorite back in Reach, just hasn't come back since, sadly. But with Halo Infinite's strong influence from Halo Reach, I'd be very surprised if it doesn't come back. A while back, 343 did some audio recordings of a helicopter doing very similar maneuvers that you can do with a Falcon and also a jet propelled, well, jet airplane. And what vehicle utilizes propellers and jets? A Falcon. The Falcon's one of my all time favorite vehicles and I would absolutely go crazy if it came back in Halo Infinite. They also confirm in this vehicle section that vehicles will have unlimited ammo like we've had traditionally with Halo so nothing's changing there but they also mentioned how weapons will interact with these vehicles as well as weapons have limited ammo count but they have to interact with vehicles in some capacity so they have to balance out 
how strong these vehicles are compared to small arms fire, but also feeling powerful enough. It's a very tight balance. Now this next section is the juicy part. We're talking about the weapons in Halo Infinite. We actually had some screenshots of some weapons as well. So for this first screenshot, you can see the MA-40 assault rifle. This does look a little bit different from what we saw from the trailer. It has a nice yellow stripe, kind of more reminiscent of Reach, much deeper color contrast as well. So they've actually changed the look of the assault rifle since the gameplay demos, which that's fantastic. I do love this redesign a lot more. Next shot we have here, we have the battle rifle. This just looks like a classic Halo 2, Halo 3 kind of battle rifle. I am all for this look. This looks fantastic. Next one, we have the Bulldog Shotgun. I know a lot of people want the classic shotgun. I have a feeling it might come back in later in some seasons when Halo Infinite finally releases, but it's not going to be in the game. We're going to have the Bulldog Shotgun right here. This shotgun is designed to be more close quarters, even shorter range than the traditional shotgun that we've had. I think it's somewhere between the mix of the Mauler and the classic shotgun. This is where this shotgun kind of sits right now. Next, we have the VK-78 Commando. This is supposed to be kind of like a heavy assault rifle. If you've played any games like Call of Duty or Battlefield, you kind of think of like a Scar H heavy assault rifle kind of thing where it's a slow fire rate, but a heavy hitting weapon where the MA-40 is much more faster fire rate, more close range, lower damage kind of output. And here we finally have the confirmation that the Hydra is coming back in Halo Infinite, completely redesigned from what we had back in Halo 5. Sporting a much more kind of geometric, blocky kind of art style to the whole thing, much different than we had it back in Halo 5, which is much more rounded, smooth and bumpy, Boldby kind of look. This actually was originally leaked as a toy reveal back in a few months ago. And I thought it was a forerunner weapon, but this ended up being a UNSC weapon and I love this redesign. And lastly, we have the Needler. This is probably the best looking Needler I've ever seen in a Halo game. I mean, look at this bad boy. Look at this man right here. And the Sandbox team mentions specifically about they want to reduce the redundancy and reclassify some weapons that we saw actually in the gameplay demo. As we know in Halo 4 and 5, there was quite a lot of redundancy when it came to the weapons compared to the UNSC and the Forerunner weapons. There are some minor differences, but essentially they kind of fill the same role. And then what they want to do with Halo Infinite is reduce that redundancy and give weapons a more unique feel and a purpose within the Sandbox. While also maintaining the classic aspect of energy weapons like plasma rifles and stuff like that good against shields low bad against health where unsc weapons like kinetic weapons are good against health bad against shields which is something halo 5 kind of struggled with a little bit because every weapon was rather lethal which made so that every weapon in halo 5 was a rather viable option it's just that it didn't really give you any purpose to use either one or the other they all just kind of killed about the same amount of time but for example that ravager that we saw back in the gameplay demo that's completely changed now actually it's no longer just a big red boom launcher it's role in play style has been pushed to allow more of an area of denial kind of play rather than just delivering damage like a typical launcher. But when we see this next gameplay reveal for Halo Infinite, it's going to be looking rather different than what we saw back in July of 2020. And this last section I want to talk about is Joseph Staten's experience while playing against a hunter in Halo Infinite's campaign. If you guys don't know Joseph Staten, he was with the original Bungie team back in the day, ever since CE up until the release of Destiny 1, he was all Bungie. So this guy definitely knows his Halo, so when it comes to playing against a hunter, he knows the tricks of what to do basically. So he mentions here the typical tricks trick that you do against hunters is that you try to bait them into doing the big swing attack and as they're doing that swing attack you kind of step to the side turn around shoot them in the back in a halo ce that was a one shot kill made hunters kind of negligible he mentions here that he tried doing that similar technique and it didn't work the hunter was able to turn around in time meaning he had to think of some new way to implement some new mechanics within halo infinite he did mention about how to utilize the grapple shot in this gunfight he didn't want to spoil exactly how it went down they just say, he just be ready to be excited about it. Meaning that hunters are gonna be a really serious foe to play against within Halo Infinite, which is super exciting to hear. Yes, I know this video was super long, but it literally, that's how long this development update is. And that just kind of skimmed through it. I wanted to give you the highlights of everything that this development update had to offer. So if you guys like these kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Make sure to check out my channel, link in the description down below. I post Halo content daily on there. We're talking a lot of MCC and Halo Infinite on there. And thank you very much, Eckhart Slider, for having me on your channel. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.